This cool move is for Legend of Dragoon. I'm going to show you how to open the locked chest in the Phantom Ship. Here we go. In the Phantom Ship, there is a chest that says uh, evil may come to the person who attempts to open the treasure chest. There's a combination lock on this chest to get the combination. Leave the room where the treasure chest is. Go down to the lower right hand corner of the screen and then make your way over to the staircase that leads down to the lower deck of the ship. In the lower deck of the ship, you'll find a hallway filled with ghosts and several doorways you can enter. You must fight your way through the ghosts in the hallway to get to the door all the way in the far right hand side of the hallway. Once you get into the room at the end of the hall, make your way into the upper right hand corner of the room where there's a small sparkling bit on the floor. Press the X button to inspect this and you'll be visited by four ghosts. Each ghost will tell you a different number. Take note of these numbers. For three of these four numbers are the solution to the combination. Now that you're equipped with the clues that'll help you solve the combination lock, make your way back through the hallway to the upper deck of the ship. The first time you attempt to open this chest, you'll get 10 tries. If you're unsuccessful in choosing the combination within 10 tries, the chest will lock up on you and you'll have to go get new clues from the ghosts in the lower deck. Using the numbers that the ghosts in the lower deck of the ship told you, rearrange the numbers until you find the correct combination. Whenever you input the incorrect combination, you might see three dots appear on screen afterwards. This indicates that one or more of the numbers you chose was the correct number and was in the correct position for the combination. This will help you know you're on the right track when you're trying to figure out the combination. And that's how to open the combination chest inside the Phantom Ship on Legend of Dragoon. You can repeat this up to six times, but each time you do, the chest will reset, which means you'll have to go below decks and get new clues from the ghosts. You'll also get fewer and fewer times to input the numbers before the combination resets each time. Good luck! PlayStation 2, it's on everyone's mind these days, and leading us into its North American launch, the excitement and anticipation surrounding it is starting to blow a few minds. Man, the graphics, the graphics is outstanding out here, I'm loving it. The graphics is sweet, especially on that fighting one down there. The controllability of the games are unbelievable. I mean, it's very smooth. It's smooth, it's fast, and it makes for a more real-life playing experience. It's pretty, uh, pretty close to cinematic quality, it's, it's unbelievable. There were a lot of parties being planned to celebrate the arrival of the PlayStation 2. Since we've never been known to miss out on free food and drink, we flew down to LA for what turned out to be a rather raucous rave. Oh man, this is beautiful. As you can see here, we got the hundreds of kids having fun playing PlayStation 2, dancing in the unison of, you know, the music. This is, I think, what, you know, the urban culture, they play video games, they listen to uh, music, they, they go to raves. All the kids here, they play video games, you know? And you go to a rave, you play a video game, you go play a video game, you dance when you win. Same difference, you know? It's all good. Dancing and video games. What better life is that? This was definitely a rave to remember. Some people were dancing up a storm out on the floor. And some were creating another type of storm playing video games. We were interested in what their favorite games were. Ready to rumble too. Shaquille O'Neal with that reach, baby. Let's him up. I got to beat up Michael Jackson. I feel good now. You know what I'm saying? I got to beat up Michael Jackson. Tekken is my favorite game. It's really in intricate fighting, and it's the styles of the fighting is just great, you know? It's I think Ridge Racer 5 looks great. Finally realized as it should be. Um, Vanavision's actually really good too, which I, I'm kind of glad they did something to show off the power. Great demonstration of its lighting and particle effects. I like the football one over there in the in the bar area, the 21 and up area. The football one has nice graphics. You got the people on the sideline chilling. You see them drinking their Gatorade while they're playing, and that's, I mean, how can you get any realer? The following week, we were off to the Metreon in San Francisco. That's where Sony Computer Entertainment was celebrating in style. Of course, when it came to having an opinion on which games were the best, these folks needed no prompting. The favorite thing, obviously, has been Madden 2001. It's just been great. I mean, everything from the realism of the rain scene, I think it's totally cool. And then I love watching, you know, the fact that they're breathing in the rain through the field. So, 
And then not only do you get to play football, but you get to actually feel like you're there. Uh, the Tech and Tag uh, tournament is pretty, uh, pretty unbelievable. Well, my favorite game was SSX, the snowboarding game. Um, I thought the visual effects were really great. The graphics was awesome. Carmen, Before you could say honey roasted peanuts, we were back on another plane headed for LA. With no invitation in sight, we made a feeble attempt to crash a star-studded Hollywood party. Luckily, we knew someone on the guest list who was able to sneak us in. Now, we may have been starstruck, but Maggie did manage to strike up some conversations. I'm a huge PlayStation fan. I I've been waiting for this day. I'm going to cry right now. I, I think I'm going to cry. I'm a huge fan. Oh, I'm having a blast. I mean, there's, there's music, food and PlayStation. It's pretty much a guy's heaven. I think I can pretty much quit, quit my TV show and just sit up here on the roof and play. Maggie, the epitome of the inquiring mind, just had to know if Wayne was going to subscribe to the PlayStation Underground. Now that I know the PlayStation Underground is around, I'll be there. I'll definitely be there. Um, can, I, can I get codes and tips and whatnot? Oh yeah. Then I'll do it. Because when I can't beat it, I just cheat. It's sad but true. Even though we were wiped out from our trips, we were brimming with confidence that the PlayStation 2 launch would be a huge success. Why? Because of the word on the street. Um, actually, I already got one reserved for the day it comes out. Uh, most definitely. I already have mine pre-ordered. Yeah, definitely. On uh, the 26th, I'll be either camping or I'll be knocking doors to get one. I thought it would be like a perfect birthday present for me because today's my birthday. And I'm definitely going to go buy me one right when it comes out. It's on my Christmas list. I'm hoping to get two. I can't wait for them to come out. I'm gonna get like six of them. Oh, I got it. I have a great idea. This year, the Who's will pay. It's beginning to look a lot like holiday time. We thought you'd like a special treat, a story all in rhyme. Today we'll give you a backstage look, an update of that classic book. You've heard about the movie new. Now The Grinch is a video game too. Universal uh, approached us in summer 99 uh, with concept The Grinch, which was a video game based on a movie to be released uh, in uh, November uh, 2000. But I think the Grinch is a great character because it allowed us to reverse the perspective that a gamer has usually, which is be a good guy. In the Grinch, you are a bad guy that, that can't stand love. We tried as much as we could to uh, mimic what Jim Carrey would do in the movie. And so basically what we did is we brought that back and then we used that as a reference for the animation for the Grinch. It would seem to be a cinch that all would know about the Grinch. Alas, it is not true. They were French-Canadian and hadn't a clue. At first it was like, who is the Grinch? I didn't really know. So we got the uh, actual cartoon that was made and through the internet, you know, looking at references, books. These were really the references we had for the Grinch. And if I knew him before, he would be probably one of my idols because the Grinch, he's so funny. Everybody has a little bit of the Grinch inside. The Grinch's mission was most foul. When he heard those who's, oh, how he'd howl. So as the tale goes, he set out to see if he might steal Christmas away that same Christmas night. I'd say the game uh, departs from the movie as soon as we get out of Whoville. What we've done is we've created environments that didn't exist in the story. As soon as you get out of Whoville, you go to Who Forest, Who Lake, you go to the dump, In order to keep joy from the Who's, the Grinch stops at nothing to make certain they lose. What kind of tricks and what kind of toys will this Grinch use to scare Who girls and Who boys? 
What we really wanted with the gadgets in the game, we wanted to give the player the feeling that they were actually building them. So what we did is we scattered blueprints of the gadgets throughout the levels. And the player can't just use a gadget, you know, it's not like it, the, the gadget is just floating around. You have to find the blueprints, go back to your computer machine in the Grinch cave, which is where everything is starting, and then build up the gadget uh, just much like a puzzle, I'd say. You're just moving the pieces together until you fit them in place and then the gadget is activated. I'd say for me, uh, one of the best, I think, is the uh, rotten egg uh, shooter. I think, I mean, just the idea of shooting rotten eggs, I thought were pretty funny. So green egg, I should say, but you know, the green egg launcher I thought, I thought was an interesting weapon to use, you know, just throwing eggs in you know, people's window and see them you know, running because it smells so bad. I thought it was pretty interesting. The Grinch is really fiendishly crude. He likes to be rotten, nasty, and rude. But can this new game hope to cause such fear? The answer is quite devilishly clear. The Who's will cringe and quiver and hide as the gamers give in to their Grinchier side. Time for a facelift, Mr. Mayor. The interesting thing about the tricks in the Grinch was that we needed to use the tricks and put that in a video game format. So we had to think about tricks that could be played and you know with a controller. The funniest tricks are those against the mayor. Let's say you have like uh, the mayor's posters scattered across Whoville for instance and then you would have to paint a mustache or change him <laughs> to a clown. Yeah, great! The Grinch does love to tease and to taunt, but now we must know more about this game that we want. Is it easy to play? Is it done in a day? What do you say? What do you say? You really don't look healthy. The game is constructed in a way that an inexperienced gamer can easily go through the game, have fun, and finish it, and see the ending. But also, to complete the game 100% takes a lot of dedication. I'd say one of the most challenging puzzles is what we call the clock tower. In the movie, you have a tower uh, which shows, displays that uh, the day is left before Christmas. The idea is basically to change the days that are left just to make people free. We now bid adieu to our inventive team. Our excitement can barely stay in at the seam. To you gamers we wish with all of our might. Happy holidays to all and to all a Grinchy night. Woohoo, all right, it's Party time! I'm here at one of the many shindigs going on around the country to celebrate the launch of the PlayStation 2 Computer Entertainment System. And to help kick things off, we decided to split up this issue of the magazine. Disc 1 will have all the usual cool stuff that you can play on your PlayStation, but Disc 2 is all DVD, baby. You know what that means. You'll need a PlayStation 2 to play the second disc. You're going to have to scour the countryside for one because these things are flying off the shelves. It's not nice to gloat, Maggie. Just because you've got one already. And soon, so will everyone else. Okay, so on disc one, we headed up to Montreal to hang out with the developers of the new Grinch game. Then we partied on at some of the biggest PlayStation 2 launch celebrations. <laughs> Must have been a tough couple months for you. Hey now, I can only deal with one Grinch per disc. Yeah, very funny. So, uh, do you want to check out our first PlayStation 2 DVD disc? Well, it's about time. See you on disc two. Here's a cool move for the level Farcom Expo Center in the game Siphon Filter 2. Now the troubling part is getting through the ventilation shaft immediately following the second checkpoint without alerting the guards nearby. I'm going to show you how it's done. Starting here immediately after you acquire your second checkpoint, you want to climb up into the ventilation shaft and then follow it as it winds around the many different corners. What we're looking for here is the three ventilation grates. 
What we want to concentrate on is the uh, second or the middle ventilation grate. That's where we'll get a clear view of the GI. Once again, not this ventilation grate, that's the first one, but the second one, which is right here. First thing we need to do is go ahead and shoot out the ventilation grate with our pistol. Okay, then you see a GI right down there. Now we need to go in and equip our crossbow because it uses tranquilizer darts. It's very important that we do not kill the GI because that will fail the mission. We do not want to shoot the GI in the head because that will also uh, kill the guard, which once again we do not want to do. Shoot him anywhere else on the body with your crossbow. That'll take him out. And you want to continue down through the ventilation shaft until you reach the final grating. Switch back to your 9mm pistol, shoot that out, and then drop down to the floor below. And that's how you get through the ventilation shaft without alerting all the GIs. Here's a cool move to get off the rooftop in the New York slums level for Siphon Filter 2. What you want to do here is come up onto this fan. Make sure you select a powerful weapon with enough uh, ammo. You have a couple of guards up here that you're going to want to take out. Go ahead and take them easily out with headshots. Have one there on, on the level of the rooftop that you're on and the one below. Pick up any flak jackets and ammo that they have. Then come over here to this ledge on top of the roof. Turn around and drop down below and use your L1 button to see an awning down below that says clean rooms low rates. Drop down to that area there and this will get you down into street area in the New York slums level so you can go ahead and continue on. And that's how it's done. Welcome to another exciting edition of Cool Moves. This week we'll look into Spyro, Year of the Dragon. I'm going to show you how to get on top of the temple in frozen altars. Make your way from the beginning of the level, up this staircase, and around this corner, where you'll come to a ledge you can glide from. From here you can glide onto the temple. So just line yourself up on this corner, with the corner of the temple in view, then charge over the edge, jump, glide, and flutter at the end to get on top of the temple wall. From here you can make your way to the top of the temple, or you can glide to another egg, and that's how it's done. In this segment of Cool Moves, I'm going to show you how to get past the Norse God Puzzle in the Spiral Tower for Wild Arms 2. Let me show you how it's done. First of all, when you come to this room, you'll notice that there are seven plates. You must hit these seven plates in a certain order in order to open up the door to the next room. The first plate that you want to activate will be this one right here, the one that talks about the mother's face. The second plate you want to hit will be this one over here, the one that talks about two. The third plate you want to hit is going to be this one. Here's where you're going to want to press the fourth plate. Here's the fifth plate. The sixth plate. And lastly, the seventh plate. And as you can see, that will open up the door. And that's how it's done.